Folks, this video is really just for beginners who actually want to see Comet Neowise without any special equipment. So I'm going to show you how to do that without a telescope, without a star tracker. You really don't need any of that. This comet is so bright you can even see it with your naked eye. But I'm going to show you what I did. So uh, let's get started. So this is the camera and tripod I used to capture it with. And about 45 minutes after sunset in the northwest, the comet was visible to the naked eye for me, even in a Detroit light polluted skies. So all I did was point my camera in that direction and I focused on some trees off in the distance and uh, th th I started taking pictures. The only thing I did with my camera is I, t I changed this setting, there's an S, to that S. I think S represents, well it would make sense if it represents shutter. I, I actually, um, I set my camera to take four second exposures instead of uh, instantly. And that would help me expose the comet a little more and make it easier to see uh, in my in my camera. So each camera is going to be different in how it does that. So I, I found that four second exposures uh, work just fine for me. And let me show you how my pictures look. So where I had set up was across the street on my neighbor's lawn. Um, I saw them drive off and so they didn't even know I was there, but I was over there for about a half an hour just standing on their lawn. I don't think they would have minded though. But this is one of the pictures I took. And what I did is um, I pointed my tripod in that area. I knew it was next to the tree because I could see it with my naked eye. And uh, I zoomed in just a little bit. And I focused on these trees off in the distance because it was a little bit too hard to try and focus on the comet. And but it was just so much fun to see it and to capture it in a picture. Um, I was having a blast. So uh, and if you want to um, stick around, I know it's not very bright, and I, I know it's 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 I didn't create the Mona Lisa here, but this is just a single exposure. But what I did is um. I, I didn't realize, but I never moved my tripod. And when I kept taking pictures, I noticed the comet was moving. It was setting in the in the northwest. Um, not because, but the comet is moving fast, but it was because of the Earth's rotation. I thought, oh, uh, it was a happy accident. I thought, I'll go ahead and make a time lapse out of this. So stick around. This is a little bit more advanced if you want to see how I created the time lapse. Now, I use this software called PixInsight. It's for astrophotography specifically, but other people can use Photoshop. And I'm gonna show you what I do in this software. I know it's a little bit advanced, but um, so you, you can skip this part if, if you don't really wanna do a time lapse or, or if you know of another way, that's great. But I'm gonna pull up uh, Dynamic Crop. Now the comet is very small compared to the rest of the background. So I'm gonna really crop a lot away from this picture. I really want to focus. I want to keep some of the background though. How about something like that? Let, let's take a look at this. Okay, now let's blow this up. All right, so now we can e definitely see the comet a little easier. The tree's a little blurry because um, going four seconds is a bit too long, but I wanted to make sure um, I could see that comet. So the comet doesn't look bad, but the rest of the stuff doesn't look great. So, okay, I, I, I cropped away a lot of it, but you know what? I want to crop away some more because I think the comet is still too small compared to the rest of the picture. How about something like that? I want to keep some of that tree so we can compare, see how the comet moves in relation to the tree. Let's see, let's see here. Okay, I think that might work. Now let's make the comet a little easier to see. I'm gonna pull up curves here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna click on the background and I see the background. And see that purple line, that's where the background is on that. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna put a dot on that part of the curves and let's see where the comet is. Uh, right about that area. So let's see, 
I'll pull up the preview. I want to make the dark, the background a little bit darker, and I'm going to try and make the comet a little bit brighter. I don't know if this is working or not. Let's update it. Let's see before and after. Did that do anything? Before, after. Before, after. What if I went one more? That's probably too much. We'll leave it like that. <clears throat> now I'm going to pull up... Uh, Let's do a little denoids on it. I'll just pull up this, what is that? Multi-scale linear transform. I'm going kind of fast here, but you can use your own software however you do this. I didn't want this video to be too long. All right, let's try and denoise. All right, that's a little smoother. Let's see, before. After, yeah, that's fine. All right. Now, I just updated one picture. Now I want to apply this to all of them. So this is really uh, interesting. I can actually do these same commands on all of my pictures at once. So I'm going to pull up my process container. And um, uh, my face is in the way, probably, in this lower right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back, or I mean in the lower left, I'm going to come back in a second here and move my face to the other, other part. Okay, so what I did to that picture, I want to do to all of them in one swoop. So I'm going to come over here, and um, I selected this picture already. This is the one I was updating, and I did two dynamic crops on it to get in close to that, to that comet. I'm in history here. And, oops, it keeps closing on me. I'm in the History Explorer. And then I did a Curves Transformation to get in, to make the comet brighter. And I did a Multi-Scale Linear Transformation to, to do a little bit of denoise on it. Now I'm going to go into Image Container. I love this feature where I can update lots of files at once. And I'm going to click on Plus. And I'm, these are all the pictures I captured. And I, I need to set an Output Folder. Um, let's call this, let's call this, um, oops, we'll call it process. So there's the output folder, and this is the, this is the file name, and it always tries to put a date and time on the file name, but I don't like that. It makes the file name too long, so I'm going to take that part out. And then I'm going to drag, this is really strange how this works, I'm going to drag this image container to the background and then drop all of my commands onto it. And it should start updating all of these uh, files with the same changes. And I can see the files being created here. There's only maybe 10 or 11 of them, so we'll just stick around. So it's making the same change to all of them. Okay, it finished, and since my tripod didn't move, I was lucky that the, the pictures are very lined up. So if I start scrolling through these, I can see the comet setting in the northwest. Isn't that cool? And I had no idea I was doing that until I started scrolling through these when I was done capturing last night. I'm like, ah, this is great. I'm going to do a time lapse. So let me show you how I create the time lapse. I use this PIP software, which is free, and I'm going to add all of the files into it. I'll highlight all of them. And I'm going to go to this animation tab, and it's already clicked on play all frames in forward order. I'm also going to want to play them in reverse. I like going forward and reverse. That's just a personal preference. And I'm going to change uh, this to animated GIF. And we'll say, let's play this in a uh, uh, 10 second frame rate. That was the output option. Now let's go to do processing. Let's see how the time lapse looks. Hey, can you see it? I think it looks pretty cool, folks. It was a lot of fun, and I know it's not the Mona Lisa. But the fun is the important thing, and, and, and that I definitely had. So, all right, that's it. No telescope, no tracker, just a camera and a tripod, and you can create something from our solar system. All right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.